Hi, in this video, we're gonna do a couple of fixes for our RPG game. Mainly, we're gonna work on two things. We're gonna make sure that when you go from one level to the next, that your stats stay the same because right now the level and the XP they go back to zero. And right now, if you move diagonally, you go faster than you would go while moving in a straight line. So, we're gonna fix that as well. Now, before we go and fix those things, there's one quick fix I wanna do. And this applies if you've been making a turn-based game and you added your second room. You might get a bug where when you reach the end of the first level, instead of taking you to the next room, it shows you an error. And this is happening because you have a separate room for the battle and that is set as the next room after the first room. So if you go to your rooms list and click on the home icon, you're gonna see that the battle room comes after room 1. So I'm gonna change the order here so that room 2 comes after room 1 because from room 1 we wanna go to the next room and now this should fix the issue. Now let's work on the data persistence problem. I'm gonna go into my level room and just move the player to the end of the level so we can test this. And if I gain some XP and some levels, and then I go to the next room, you can see that the level resets to 1 and all the XP is gone. For this, we need an object that can carry the data from one room to the next. And for that, that object needs to be persistent. So let's go and create a new object. I'm gonna call it obj carry data. And I'm gonna make it persistent. And that's all we need for the object here. So to program the actual persistence, let's go into the obj player object. Here I'm gonna add the room end event. So when the room ends, we want to make an instance of the object that we just created and pass on some variables into it. So I'm gonna call instance create depth and just create an instance of obj carry data. Then for the last argument, I'm gonna pass a struct. And this struct can have any variables that we want to set in the new instance that we are creating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create variables with the same names from the variables that I want to save. So for example here, it's gonna make a variable called level and its value will be the value of the player's level variable. So in the same way, I'm gonna save the XP, the XP requirement, the damage and the total HP. I'm not gonna save the current HP. I'm just gonna reset the HP to the total HP when the new room starts. But if you do want to save the current HP, you can do that as well. Now there is one thing here I wanna do only if you followed the turn-based video instead of the real-time combat video. At the top of this event, let's add a condition to check if an instance exists. And that'll be for the object obj battle switcher. In that case, we're gonna exit the event. Again, this is only if you made a turn-based game. And this just makes sure that we are not going into the battle room. Because if we are, then we don't want to do this whole carrying data thing. Now, to load the data back when a new room starts, we need to go and add the room start event. And here, we're gonna take the variables back from the obj carry data instance. For that, I'm gonna use the with statement. And using this, I can run some code in the obj carry data instance. And the nice thing about this is that if the instance doesn't exist, then this is not gonna error. So you don't need an instance exists call to check if that instance exists. Now within the with statement, the self changes, as in any variables you read, will be from the obj carry data instance. So the player can be referenced from the other variable. So I'm gonna set the level in the player or the other instance using the level from the carry data instance. So the carry data instance is giving the level value back to the player. So in the same way, I'm gonna go and take back all the other variables that I set. And I'm also gonna set the HP to whatever is the total HP at that point. Then we call instance destroy to destroy the carry data instance because its job is finished. It carried the data from one room to the other and it gave the data back to the player. So now we can destroy it. With this, if you now run the game and you go from one room to the other, your level XP damage and total HP will be carried over to the next room. And this way you can pass any kind of variables from one room to another room. Now another problem we have is that when you move the player diagonally, it moves faster than it would while moving on a straight line. 
And this happens because when you're taking input on both axes separately and then you're adding them together, it's obviously going to result in a speed that's higher than what it would be if it just remained on one axis. So to fix that, let's go into OBJ player and let's go into the step event where we do the movement. This is where we are reading the horizontal and vertical inputs from the keyboard. So after taking these values, we're going to run some operations to make sure that the speed remains the same in any direction. So first of all, we're going to create a new local variable and call point direction to get the direction of the input vector. So it gets the direction from 0 by 0 to the horizontal and vertical inputs. And now we're going to convert this direction back into x and y values because that's what we need for our movement system. So first of all, I'm going to take the x component of the vector by calling length there x. The length of the vector here is 1 and then we are passing in the direction that we calculated. So just consider it a line from the center of a graph which is 1 pixel long and it's going in the direction that we got from this function. And we are just taking the x component of that line. So after that, I'm going to run this to take the y component from the same line or vector. With this, if you run the game, the problem is fixed. The speed is constant in all directions, but it's constant all the time. Like if you let go of the key, it still moves. So to fix that, we need to make the length of the vector be dependent on the input from the keyboard. So I'm going to make a variable for the length and I'm going to set it equal to a boolean condition. So it's checking if there's input either on the horizontal axis or the vertical axis. And in that case, the length will be 1 or true. Otherwise, it will be 0 or false. So then I'm just going to pass that length into the length there variables instead of a constant length of 1. And now if you run the game, everything is normal and the diagonal movement is normalized. But the issue is that the camera is now jittery and it's not smooth anymore. And this is a side effect of us using the built-in GameMaker camera that we set in the room settings. So now to fix this, we have to handle the camera movement ourselves in code. So we need to disable the built-in camera movement before we code our own. For that, I'm going to go into my room and go into the viewport settings. And for the first view under object following where we set OBJ player, I'm going to click on it and set it to none. And if you have other rooms, you need to go there and do the same. And now we can go and code our own camera, which I'm just going to do in the player object. You can make a separate object for it if you want. That's what a lot of people do. And that's what I mostly do as well. But here we don't need a lot of code. So just in the player object, I'm going to go into the end step event. And here, let's first of all get the camera that we are using in the room. And then let's get the width and the height of that camera. Now let's calculate the position for the camera based on the position of the player. Since the position of the camera starts from its top left corner, we are subtracting half of the camera's size from the player's position. So the player stays in the center. And then we are applying that new position back to the camera. So now if you run the game, the smoothness issue is fixed. So with the new diagonal movements, our camera works perfectly. One issue is that your camera can go off bounds. So it doesn't stay within the room anymore. We can easily fix that. If we go to this part after calculating the camera position, we can clamp the position between two values. So we are basically limiting the value within a range. So for the x position, it will be between 0 and room width minus the camera width. And then similarly for the camera y, the range will be 0 to room height minus camera height. So now if you run the game like before, the camera will be limited within the room and it's not going to go outside of it. So these were just some things that I caught from your comments and I wanted to fix them. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.